Hi, my name is Thomas Johnson, and I'm the founder and CEO of Get Up and Get Fit Wellness Concierge. I'm also a C-suite advisor and investor, and you're listening to the How May I Serve You podcast, where I'm constantly on the quest to surround myself with the best coaches while learning how to better serve our executive clients by asking them, how may I serve you? Today's show is sponsored by Get Up and Get Fit. Get Up and Get Fit will be providing students with textbooks and school supplies in Cambodia in honor of our guests today, as well as our philanthropic mission to impact at least 50,000 people per year. And today's guest is Anthony Thompson. Anthony, how are you, buddy? Sensational, Thomas. Sensational. Awesome. I love that word. <laughs> so, Coach Anthony Thompson is an Amazon best-selling author, speaker, consultant, coach, and new version partner where he has written nine devotionals amassing more than 70,000 subscribers. His blend of self-help, mystics, and the Bible is a modern spin on the guiding and developing powerful, high-performing leaders in their businesses. That's amazing right there. Okay, okay. So Anthony Thank is you. the husband of a superstar Australian bride. Okay, superstar. <laughs> they have been married for 15 years and have created three incredible miracles. Some of Anthony's previous jobs include lawnmower experts, illegal pharmaceutical sales, and junkyard logistics coordinator. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's right. You got to get creative. I like that. I like that. Logistic, junkyard logistic coordinator. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. How did you come up with that name? Man, talk to me. <laughs> well, you look, you, when you're when you're in, you know, high school age and you're trying to make some money, I had a friend that had a junkyard and he needed parts delivered to the, the different places that wanted junkyard parts, right? And and what happens is uh you don't have Google Maps back then, Thomas. Mm -hmm. You had to pull out the book, you know, and so I had to coordinate literally on a piece of paper each route, you know, how I was gonna get there, each part, oops, sorry. Each part, and that was the that was the logistics back then. You know, that was how you got from point A to point B. Wow! So utilizing the yellow pages and you're just doing your thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Flipping pages, man, on the south side of Chicago, running running junkyard junk all over the city. Yeah. Awesome. All right. So, Anthony, let's dive more into your lifestyle. So, give him the too many version, man. Talk to me. Lifestyle. Your um your life, you know, who is Anthony Thompson? Life, yeah, man. Look, um, I grew up on the south side of Chicago with a troubled home, a lot of trauma, and you know, I was able to turn that into a lot of resilience. Um, got got into early on into a Fortune 500 PR firm and worked my way through a lot of those types of businesses until the point to where, you know, I loved helping people and I got into the coaching side and you know, got married and and started developing my life and you know my whole thing is being able to solve problems for powerful, you know, leaders and their businesses and, and developing them. And so th those, those, um, you know, that was my laboratory and that's what I've continued to create. Amazing. Amazing. And Anthony, I know, um, you have a, uh, yeah, you have your, um, this quote, right? This, I think you go by, you basically say, um, seeing people win is, is your, your calling assignment on this earth, right? Mm -hmm. And you also mm -hmm. study um, psychology, um, spiritual teachings. So talk to me more about the mystic books and the Bible, how you've been able to combine and blend these uh, different um, works. Yeah. Look, um, Thomas, I'm sure you've gone down the road of all sorts of things, too. I grew up as a preacher's kid. So, you know, I had a very fundamental belief of what the Bible should look like. Unfortunately, what I discovered was that I felt like back then, kids in church and people in church were sort of second class citizens. They weren't leading the world. They weren't changing the game. Mm -hmm. They weren't people that I was like, man, I want to be like them. And so I kind of drifted off and said, well, how are these other people doing it? And that took me on a long, long road, which, you know, that's a whole nother gamut of podcasts, but it essentially it, it got me into studying what else was out there. You know, whether it was Pantangeli, whether it was the Bhagavad Gita, whether it was the Quran, whether it was the Torah, I started just to say you know, the Kabbalah. I just said, what, what, what are these other streams? Mm. And I kept, you know, learning and growing and taking pieces of it and learning from it and, and adapting it. But ultimately I came down for me and I said, you know what, what I'm finding is a lot of these things that are in all these other books, I'm actually finding them in the Bible. 
And that for me really resonated because I then was able to say, you know what, maybe I'm the guy that's supposed to be there that people say, I want to maybe look up to that guy or I want to maybe do what he's doing because he's, he's actually leading. He's actually doing something with his life. And so I took all of those and that's a lot of the stuff that I write on you version is I'm taking, you know, books like the four agreements, right? Um, a, uh, a shamanism book. And I attach that to what the Bible says about yeah. those four agreements. Or yeah. I take, you know, the seven habits of highly effective people. And I, and I turn that into what does the Bible say? What those seven habits are, because most of these huge best-selling books, I've discovered most of that content. I can find it in the Bible. Exactly. Exactly. So Anthony, um, I'm really happy to be having this conversation with you um, today because I'm actually on my journey where I'm doing the same thing. You know, um, I, I decided to reread the Bible um, right now. I'm reading um, second Corinthians and I, yeah. I've also invested in the, the Gnostics, right? I, I purchased the book of Enoch because I wouldn't, I wouldn't know more about the books that yeah. were not added to the Bible. Yeah. You know? So um, it sounds like you've had a, beautiful journey, a very uh, interesting journey at the same time. And you'll be able to pick up things from here and there and bring it together. And I love the fact that you went back to the source, the Bible, to try mm. to make sense of all these things. So kudos to you, man. Kudos to you. Thanks, brother. Thanks. It's Look, it's not a straight line. You know that. It's it's all <laughs> over the place. And it's a lot of nights of uh, you know crying on the couch and 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 losing jobs and figuring that out you know i i i get emotional thinking about it because that's sometimes what it takes it takes it takes the hard road to get into the the thing that really resonates where you have peace the most yes indeed so so anthony now let's uh so before i dive further into like trying to figure out and learn more about coaching mm. talk to me about your childhood man because i know mm. you you were raised in the south side of chicago mm. you know and we all know um, from just the media and the news that that's not the best place to grow up. Yeah. Yeah. So it, it, talk to yeah, us about that. Yeah, man. You know, it's, um, I guess when you live there, you don't, you don't realize it until you're kind of take a few steps out or you, you know, you get older and you start reading the news, but mm -hmm. yeah, it was, um, you know, I grew up, look, my, <clears throat> excuse me, my mom was, you know, pregnant at, at third, uh, at 14, having a baby at 15. And that was me. And, and so I got, I got bounced around in, 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 in her family and who, you know, who can take care of, you know, here and grandma gets you an aunt gets you a friend gets you, you know, so I bounced around those first seven years while my mom was trying to figure out life and, you know, got into a lot of just addictions and drugs and, and the wrong people. And ultimately at the age of seven, she on a Super Bowl weekend um, said she was going to come, come and pick me up and she never did. And the next time I saw her, I was, it was a casket. And so I was seven years old with no mom and, and, a, and a biological father that was unknown. Mm. And, and so that, that, that was a very, tr you know, crazy situation. But out of that, I ended up having my kin, the oldest, um, my mother's oldest sister adopting me and brought me in and they were preachers. And so I went from this very, um, crazy, you know, upbringing into a very fundamental, you know, formula situation with God, which was, which was good and bad, mm -hmm. but I had to, I had to get through, you know, people talk about those pains as kids in your first eight years. And those are huge years. Um, and you know, you, you, you don't just, that just doesn't go away by someone saying, Lord, please, please take it away. You know, Lord, you know, deliver me from these, you know, um, I realized that, that there was a lot of the things that I was running into in my life was simply ego because I was trying to prove myself because I had so much rejection and so much uh, lack of self work and, and limiting beliefs and all those kinds of things that, you know, I have clients have, everybody has, but it's taken the time to understand where it's coming from and why it's there and that you don't have, you actually don't have to have it anymore. It's, it's not a part of you if you don't want it to be a part of you. And that's how I started to grow through that ultimately and, and using it more in a positive way rather than the negative way of, I got to prove myself. I've got to, you know, um, do drugs. I got to fill it with something else, fill it with girls, fill it with success, fill it with fame, fill it with influence. You know, I, I finally realized that, you know, the, the, the real potion and the real magic in this thing is going to be that connection to the source mm. and, um, and, and I, and therapy, like, don't get me wrong. Like there's therapy. So, yeah. uh, you know, God can do a lot and, and, and also there's wisdom in therapy. So, that's 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 how I kind of came slowly out of that. Yes, indeed. So, um, Anthony, were there 
were there critical um, folks that played a, a pivotal a pivotal role in your life um, in, in regards to your the role models? Um, was there your your um, your aunts, your your uncle, your, your, your cousins you looked up to? Like, talk to me about that. Yeah, I think um, I think growing up, I I wasn't there wasn't a family member that I was like, yes, I want to be like them, or okay. there wasn't and there wasn't anybody in church where I was like, yes, I want to be like them. Uh, I think, you know, for me, I was all athletics. All I wanted to do was play sports. And so I put all of my energy and focus so much so that um, even at a small Christian school where I ended up getting suspended my senior season, I still ended up getting a scholarship um, to, to play college football. And that's all, again, it was all of that internal, you know, struggle that I had going on that I, that I would put out into the football field, or I would put that energy in there to say, look at me, look at look at how much I could be a success. And and that was my validation, you know? So I looked up to guys like, you know, I watch coach prime now and I'm like, God, man, Dion was just, I, I almost named my son Dion, but my wife wouldn't let me, uh, <laughs> you know, that's how much that like back in the day, man, I had all the gear and all the gloves and, yeah. and the whole thing, man, I was playing corner and I was playing football and man, if I could be Dion, that was, that was just it, you know? Just playing corner. Well, wow. corner is, is, is I, I believe corner, corner, a quarterback position is one of the hardest position in the whole game. In the yeah. whole game. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, let me, let me put a caveat. I played corner in high school. Uh -huh. Then in college, you know, I quickly realized that, you know, I didn't have the speed that I thought I had. So oh, they, okay. moved, they moved me to safety. <laughs> Gotcha. Okay. Okay. All right. Listen, you know, being yeah. a safety is also is also a pretty solid position as well. You have your yeah. eyes open. You have to view the whole field. You know, so that's awesome right there. Yeah. All right. So, all right. So you utilize football as a as a ways and means to um, I guess as as a, as, as therapy, right? As mm. a, a therapeutic outlet mm -hmm. in a sense, right? Mm -hmm. So from high school to um college, how's that? How was that transition? Again, it was turbulent. I ran away from home in high school. Um, you know, so I had, you know, I, I had, I had figured out a way to still graduate because I had enough credits. So, you know, that was a little bit tough. I get into college. Um, all these kids, you know, that were in front of me, I was I tell this story. I was six man on the special teams depth chart. So if you know anything about football and sports, you know, that like, first of all, if you're playing special teams, you're not really playing. And secondly, if you're six string on the special teams depth chart, you're definitely not playing. So I came in there, man, like uh, nobody uh, didn't think I had a shot. I was like, holy smokes, I don't know if I'm going to make this team. And I just quickly realized that the only way I'm going to be able to make this team was if I had to do everything that everybody else wasn't doing. And so all these guys that came in with superstars and full ride scholarships, you know, I was out hustling them. I was tackling harder. I was getting hit harder. I wasn't limping. I wasn't struggling. I was out. My, my body ached and was sore. I wanted to die, but I refused. I said, no way. I'm going to make sure that I'm, I didn't come here to sit on the bench and within short amount of time and guys get hurt and guys give up and guys that thought they were good. They weren't as good as they thought they were. And ultimately that drive and determination put me as one of two freshmen that not only um, traveled, but started and played in the national championship for that team. As a freshman, wow! As a that's freshman, amazing. that's amazing. Yeah. yeah, no red shirt. Yeah, straight in. Wow, wow. That yeah. So, so, so again, that th those things, you know, as a kid, you know, that that was where I was like, I I needed worth, I needed value, and so everything that for me for the value was in that type of recognition, you know, and and that's that's one form of recognition, but again, you know, it's ego. It's yes. I am what I am, what I have, I am what I do, I am what other people think about me. I'm separate from God. I'm separate from people. And so you have this, this, you know, false image of yourself that can be a roller coaster because what happens next week when you don't do well, right. And you're like, Oh, you know, you're so down and, and it, and it hurts. And so that was a progression that continued through after college. And even after I was married and, you know, working at the companies that I was working at and saying, that was me, that was who Anthony was, was he made this help make this business successful or, you know, and you get you, you that was my worth and value until what happens? You get laid off mm -hmm. or the job changes. Then what do you do? You know, then all of a sudden you're like your, your world crumbles and you actually don't know who you are. Mm -hmm. And so that's where that whole internal rebuild was not just a part of who I am, but it's something that I deal with every single day with clients and saying, hey, let's get 
the rebuilding process because you're so attached to your toys, your influence, your success. But what is it that you're actually good at? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Amazing words, man. Amazing words. Yeah, that, that's important. It's important to tap into um, the things that's not materialistic, right? Um, mm. Get away from the ego. Get away from the, you know, the the toys. Um, get to that intrinsic why. You get to mm. the real reason for why you're here. So, A.T., Anthony Thompson, man. My man. man. <laughs> <laughs> My man. So, um, now let's tap more into, let's talk more about your coaching, right? Sure. Um, so why did you get into coaching in the first place, right? And and what is your coaching style? Mm. Yeah, it's good. I um like I said before, you know, growing up as a preacher's kid, I watched my dad, you know, uh go through hundreds, maybe thousands. It was a big church, hundreds, maybe thousands of people, and I just saw he was just like so much energy was was gone from him, and it was almost like the same people would come back and I was like, I don't want to do that because he's not even getting paid for it. <laughs> so like, I was like, no, I'm not going to be a pastor, not going to you know, do all that, even though I did dabble in it for a little bit. But during um, a season where I was really frustrated with my job and work, my wife said to me, she said, uh, I know you like Jay Shetty. Did you know that um, he does coaching? And I said, no, I don't know that. I do like Jay. And I just kind of got curious and I was like, hmm, let's see what that's, this is like. And I got into it and I started doing it and I started working through it and I started talking to people and I started asking them more questions. And I just felt, you know, you said it earlier, Thomas, I just felt like that was an assignment on my life where I could sit with people and I looked and realized the gifts and the skills that God had given me. And I said, this makes sense. Sitting with people, developing them, creating the, uh, creating the visible from the invisible because that's what coaching is. It's all invisible. You, you, you're not there yet, but you have to, you have to draw a plan that has not been executed yet. You have to get someone to believe that there's this invisible life that they're going to be in, in, a part of. And I call that insights. And so when I coach, you know, there's frameworks and there's all those kinds of things. I think so many of them are so similar. I think the only thing that can really set someone apart is understanding that if that there's going to be insights that somebody has, I'd call that wisdom. Someone would call it awareness. <clears throat> the Bible calls it wisdom. The wisdom is being able to recognize the difference from something else, the difference in a deal, the difference in a job, the difference in a relationship, the difference in um, things that you see, you recognize. Guys make money because they recognize the difference in the company, in the leadership. And so when I coach, that's what we're coaching for. You know, it's about whether they want to, you know, drive rev, they want to get more time, uh, they want to influence, you know, or they want to have more peace. Somewhere in those four things that we're going to probably get all of them in some form of capacity, but it starts with that insight. Someone's saying, okay, there's, there's something invisible that's in there and we've got to create that into something that's visible. Okay. Okay. So Anthony, do you coach only um, Christians or do you, um, or is your client base a mixture of Christians and other folks? Yeah, it's been a it's been a mixture, but I'd say that there is a there is a bit of faith in there. You know, okay. some people would be like, you know, I, I'm not quite as into faith, but I am. So it's a little bit of both. But I'd say the eighty percent, yes, kind of they're they have that faith kingdom kind of somewhere in their in their uh, history of life. It's been in there. Yes, yeah. indeed. Yeah. So Anthony, um. As, as a wellness coach, right? Mm. Um, something that I find is often missing from folks, even when they are mentally well, physically well, oftentimes they are sp spiritually deficient, right? Mm. Mm. And when an individual is off, they always, they always, they, they always are, they tend to struggle with life. You can have all the money in the world. But then you mm. might have suicidal thoughts. They might be in a state of depression, right? Mm. Mind you, you have all the money in the world, right? You might be physically fit, but that doesn't mean necessarily that you're balanced. Mm. So what are you doing right now as a coach? Um, you're really providing an amazing service, man. Yeah, no, thank you, brother. Yeah, thank you, man. Thank you. Yeah. I think uh, I think we all need to have that accountability. 
uh, like you said, you know how it is. Like when you're working out, you need that guy, you need that person, and a coach has that accountability and your mindset and things. And I think there's also that spiritual part where we just think it's you know we leave it to the the, the church or the preacher or whatever it may be, and it, it just doesn't happen. I've been around long enough to realize that that's just not the role that they play. You've got to take a personal responsibility on that uh, yes. to make that happen. And it, and out of it, you know, I say when you're connected to the source, you're connected to everything. Yes, indeed. Man. You know, so you know everything. You want the peace, love, joy you know, uh, abundance, overflow, all that stuff is, is connected there, you know, and it, it's about getting, getting connected to the source. Yes. Yes, indeed. It's about that relationship, right? That mm -hmm. relationship. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, yeah. um, you know, on this podcast, I interview many different coaches and they have yeah. different frameworks and different style of coaching. How would you describe your style of coaching? How do I describe it? I describe it as bespoke. Uh, every person I find is their DNA is different. So their, their life and, and, and history is different. What they think they want, as you know, is never really what they really want. So, mm -hmm. you know, you can come up with formulas and processes and say, we're going to go bang, 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 bang. And they're, they're all in there. You know, they're all, you know, different frameworks that I use, but I ultimately sit down and say, you know, what is this process that we're going to go through and, and what is it that you really, really, really want and then work on, you know, creating those types of, um, you know, you can go through, you know, I'd say, for example, like there's an ABCs example where you go through like awareness and accountability, you know, you go through the uh, balance reflections and you go through big goals and you go through, you know, just competence and consistency and, and challenging. And I think for me, one of the greatest things a coach can do is challenge you. Mm -hmm. And if they're not challenging you, you'll, you'll stop. You'll stop. Indeed. Okay. Yeah. So now I want you to put yourself in the shoe of a prospect, right? Mm. Imagine you're looking for a coach. Mm -hmm. What traits would you advise for this prospect to look for if you if you were that prospect? What traits? Yeah. Well, I think I think you want to ask for somebody that is uh it will take the time to sit with you and and take the time to sit with you and and actually unravel some of the things. A lot of times you get these quick pitches. You know, da 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 pitch, da 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 pitch. You know, a great coach is gonna hear you out, and they might, they might want to hear you out a couple times, because it's not just about the coach. Like for me, I don't, I, I'm not trying. I'm, I'm interviewing you if you're gonna work with me. It's not the other way around. Like you think you're interviewing to, to that that I want to get your money. No, 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 no. I want to see if you're actually gonna show up and do the work. Because if not then what I have is will never work for you, you know, or, or in that situation. So I think it's really big on hearing them out, knowing that there's going to be challenge and knowing that there's going to be insights and things that um, they're going to have in their life that, that they're going to be able to get to. And I think providing it, I'd also say with a coach, like they, they should, they should, you should take something away that really matters. You know, in, in business, you know, you and I know like you want to be able to give something to somebody that says, wow, that was a great takeaway. You know, that, 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 that actually really helped me right now. And the more you can do that, I, I, I put it like this. Ephesians 6, 8 says, um, what you make happen for others, God will make happen for you. And mm -hmm. most people know it as, you know, the karma, what you do for others, others will do for you. No, I'm not saying that. I'm not, cause you can't control what other people are going to do for you. You can only control what you do. But I know that in Ephesians 6, 8, it says, if you do, if you make, you make happen, when you make happen for others, God will make happen for you. So even in that moment when a coach is like, sometimes like, I don't want to give it away. You know, I, I don't want, you know, I say, look, I'm going to give you something. You're going to walk away with something that's going to help hopefully change your life. And if not, then keep going and looking for it. Yes, indeed. You know, it, it's that abundance mindset. Right? Mm -hmm. You know, it's, uh, you know, oftentimes we, we, we hear, we hear these sayings here and there, but that abundance mindset is that simply you just mentioned, right? Because once you have, once you're able to um, focus on that growth, that abundance, yeah, you no longer feel lack. You yeah. no longer feel selfish, yeah, because you know whatever you're putting out there is going to come back. Law, yeah. law, law of reciprocity, you know. Yeah, everything, everything I'm saying right now, all those sayings and quotes, once again, it goes back to the Bible. <laughs> yeah, it, it, uh, you, you, you get them back in there, man. They're in there. Yeah, yeah. that's cool. Yes, indeed. So, um, I want you to um, give us a two to three minute story, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. It, it, it's just like my favorite part of the podcast. Okay. You get the chance to, to shine a little bit more. Okay. Um, where you, you utilize your framework to help elevate and 
get your your client out of uh, out of that hump, out of that, that hurdle. Um, mm. Do you mind sharing it with us? Yeah, yeah, no problem. Yeah, I'd love to. Um, yeah, I'm trying to think of how many different ones it, it goes through, but I, I don't know. I think I think this one. It was a founder. Um, you know, seven. Yeah, it was right on the fringe of eight figures and massive anxiety, massive depression, uh, you know, was in a situation where there was uh, divorce involved and just comes in a, a complete tough situation, you know. And so a lot of it was in, you know, where are you at now? Where, where are you trying to do? And this is a guy that to me have he he has billion dollar ideas you know he's sitting with silicon valley he's raising you know everything he does is raising money in series a and series b and, and i mean this guy is just one of those guys and he's young he's you know mid 30s and so as we started working through you know again we started with awareness which is wisdom you know at recognizing the difference the difference of where are you right now and where do you want to be what's in your home how does that feel you don't like it cool let's change it uh, what's going on at work? Um, at the time, he was working with his ex-wife. I was like, look, this is probably going to be a problem at some point, which it already was. What's the exit strategy? What are we going to do next? What's the next big idea? And so we coached through that whole process to where he's now um, he's now started his own company. He's now already raised money for it in the millions. And he's already starting to um, ship product in that you know company to where he's texting me back. And all of these beliefs that we would go through, these limiting beliefs, these dark thoughts, uh, depression, he had kids involved. There was things that were constantly you know, bombarding him of, of understanding how to take the thought, trap the thought, and get the new thought. You know, stuff of journaling, stuff of, 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 of meditation, stuff of you know, uh, visualizing who he's going to be, what this next company is going to look like. And so now when these attacks are coming again from maybe his ex-wife or other circumstances. He's, he's, he's texting me just the other day, you know, a, a smiley emoji. Look, she's trying to get me with, you know, kind of a, a, a smiley face and this, and, you know, and so I, you know, I thank God for that. I thank God that he's, you know, built his life into a 2.0 version where I, you know, I call it developing, like I'm developing, you know, talent and assets as an architect. And that's what somebody does when they're coaching. They've got to be able to have this, this picture of what they want, and we're going to develop this thing just as you would develop real estate and property. You know, you're know, you going to need to get deep to get that hole in the ground, and you're going to need to start building with the right, to, the right stuff. Right, the, the, Don't go cheap when you're building this thing. You want to go in the right way. You want to build it right, build it slow, and before, you, before long, it's a skyscraper, and that's, where we're, that's how I'm building people. Key word you just said, um, words I should say, build it slow. Build it right mm. and build it slow. You know, oftentimes people try to jump from point A to, to point Z. Yeah. So do you mind just uh, staying right there for a second? Mm. Talk more about the importance of building things right and slow. Yeah. Well, look, we we all want to have things that are built right and slow. You know, just look at, you know, a Mercedes Benz versus, you know, like a little, I used to drive a little Fiat 500E, which was an electric car that, was was borderline a golf cart uh you know my kids would laugh at me my wife didn't even want the kids riding in the back seat with me because they, they it just felt so flimsy but it was just a fit you know it was a tool around car but you think about things that are well built and you're like you know what that's what i like man it looks good it feels good it's it 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 you're it's built different you know and in life uh, you know, it's all about the Kaizen effect. And you know that it's 1% every day, you know, the, the Japanese, you know, developed it in the, in the early world wars about just how can we improve 1% better? So at the end of the year, it's 365% better than we, what we were. And the only way to be able to gauge that is to be able to have some form of journaling to be able to know where you are and where you're going to go. Because if you're just based on feelings, Geez, Thomas, you know that. I mean, sh shoot, I could have a couple great tacos for the day and feel phenomenal, right? And the next day feel terrible because, you know, I'm, I'm eating trash. And you, you don't have the gauge of actually how are you improving? You know, so when it's built, when it's built right, it's built slow. It, it, it does take longer. 
Um, you have to be prepared for it, but you will also be so much more resilient for any of the attacks and any of the, the downfalls and the disasters that will be there. I guarantee you they will be there. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. So, um, Anthony, are you currently working on any new projects at the moment? Any new books, programs that uh, you'd like to share with us? You know what? The programs right now, I've really just continued with one-on-one -on -one and just limited with the people that I like to work with and the businesses. Uh, the other thing to that is I've, I've just been um, problem solving for a lot of <clears throat> high net worth people. So, you know, we've got a lot of venture capital stuff. We got a lot of private equity stuff and I'm a guy in the middle. That's just helping people solve high level problems. Um, so both of those things for me have been the most um, the biggest projects that are in play right now. And as, as I've alluded to before, you know, I'm very much in kind of the kingdom stream, kingdom business guys. Um, and those guys want to be really well aligned. And so they need a guy like myself that's, that has a network of, of those kinds of people and, or they want to kind of get coached while they're in the middle of that process too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's, that, those are the main things I'm working on, man. Yeah. Anthony, do you also work with um, corporations um, as well? Or do you just work with uh, more of uh, the individual, you know, um, personal individual? Yeah, I mean, I do work with corporations. The The issues that I have sometimes, Thomas, is if uh -huh. somebody else is paying the bill, you know, some people don't show up. So I just have to have really good, really high standards of the types of businesses that, that in corps that want to work in that capacity. Because, okay, look, like, you know, just sitting down sometimes with, with people and someone else is paying the bill, they have just not as much appreciation for it and it's and not as much buy-in. Yeah, yeah. You have to be invested. You invest, you have to invest so, you, so you can pay attention. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. So, um, Anthony, if someone were to inquire about your services or just want to connect with you, because mm -hmm. you're you a pretty awesome guy, by the way. Thanks, um, brother. Thank you. Know, where can they find you, man? Thank you. Well, and, and pause that there. I mean, Thomas, the first time we talked, I was in Australia on vacation, and I just thought that was the coolest thing. I was like, yes. I got my time zones all weirded out. I almost <laughs> missed the call with you, and, you know, you stayed on and stuck around. So that was, that was, that was huge patience for you, man. Thank you for that. No uh, but if he, yeah, if people want to find me, man, it's anthonythompson.org or Anthony Thompson uh, on Instagram. The the O on Thompson is a zero, and, and you'll see me everywhere. And just just come come say hi. Awesome, awesome. Anthony, yes, thank sir. you for coming on today's episode of How May I Serve You. I love your energy. I love everything you stand for, and I, I love your journey, man. Your journey is such a phenomenal one. And I also like to thank all of our listeners and viewers for lending us their ears and their eyeballs. And I have one last question for you. And that is, how may I serve you, Anthony? Man, I think, Thomas, uh, the connection, you know, just just linking up, man. Just um, how you doing? How's things going? What do you need? You know what I mean? I think one of the greatest, um, obviously, to be the greatest is to be the servant of all. And you know that. That's why you're doing this. And so, you know, I asked the same thing. One of my greatest uh, gifts and skills is saying, Hey, what do you need? And, and can I do it? Or can I bring the right person to the table for you to do it? So I just, I value that connection. I value that trust and that, and that type of stuff. Yeah. Yes, indeed. And I'll definitely keep in contact, man. W whatever I could do to help, I'm here. Feel free to reach out. Thank you. And um, once again, this is your host, Thomas Johnson. If you enjoyed today's episode, please feel free to share it with somebody else that would benefit. Make sure to stay tuned for next week's episode. I'll check you guys later. Much love. Be blessed. We're out. We're out, brother. <laughs>